Uh, so the next award, the Carol and Travis Jenkins Award, has been presented each year since 2005 to a person who either used to or currently uses drugs and has made an outstanding contribution to reducing drug-related harm. The award is named after Travis Jenkins, an extraordinary jazz musician and a composer who died of cancer in 2004, and his wife, Carol, who worked for many years in Papua New Guinea. Uh, the Papua New Guinea Institute of Medical Research as a medical anthropologist. It was an expert uh, renowned for her research in sexual behavior and HIV. Um, so this year, I'm absolutely delighted to present the Carol and Travis Jenkins Award to Diane Lloyd. Diane is a fierce advocate for her community, loudly and fearlessly sharing her experiences and working tirelessly for the rights of people living with HIV, specifically people who inject drugs. As an advocate, mentor, and, and an advocate and mentor in reducing stigma and discrimination faced by the community. Diane has been working tire, tirelessly at state, national, and international level, including as a volunteer for the past 35 years. It was absolutely incredible to receive this nomination. Diane helped to establish the positive organization Western Australia, working within her state, and represents the needs of women living with HIV in Australia with the National Network of Women Living with HIV. Diane was involved in developing the National Day for Women Living with HIV, which just celebrated its seventh year, and is extended to include women's health issues, regular pap smears, and breast mammograms. Diane's energy for supporting and advocating for her community is remarkable, and her, achieve her achievement list is very long. Her openness about her HIV status and willingness to take part in a campaign as a woman living with HIV makes her a target for much stigma and discrimination, but also a beacon of hope for her community and especially for women. Congratulations, Diane. Thank you, I have to say it's quite heavy. Okay, um, thank you very much to Harm Reduction International for selecting me as the recipient of this award. It means a lot to me. I'd like to thank my manager, Kevin, who I can't see because you're all, it's just black out there at the moment. Um, Winda and our previous CEO, Ange de Corey, for nominating me. In addition to NAPWA, the National Association of People with HIV, and WAC for their support with the nomination. I'm very proud and humbled to be the first Australian recipient of the Carolyn Travels Jenkins Award, and female at that. Um, who would have thought that a woman living with HIV with a long history of injecting drug use could win a international award? We are normally spoken... <laughs> we are normally spoken about in the negative and treated with stigma and discrimination. In 1986, I was first diagnosed with HIV after sharing fits, otherwise known as syringes. Not that it really matters how I contracted HIV, but in Australia, we are very lucky that our government supported needle and syringe programs at the time, and although it's a little bit late for me, but it certainly saved a lot of lives. As a result, less than 2% of people who inject drugs in Australia are living with HIV. Now that we have treatment as prevention, including PEP and PrEP and undetectable viral loads, we have really come a long way. However, I look at my peers around the world um, and see that we still have a long way to go. I tell you what, Australia really is a lucky country. Um, women who inject drugs face a high level of stigma and discrimination, and even more so when they are living with HIV. I realised this very quickly after my diagnosis, in addition to the lack of support for women um, with HIV, it was like that we were invisible. So that's why it became a voice very early in the, in the piece. This is where my work started over three decades ago, volunteering with WA's council um, in the uh, mobile NSP van and making up safer sex packs. That's how it all started for me. Since then, I have worked with peer-based harm reduction for the last 14 years and lived with Hep C and, um, until there was a cure, and I did that very early in the piece, um, and very much an advocate at work for getting our consumers onto treatment. 
and then most recently, beating breast cancer. My work... I just want to add something there about with having breast cancer, which was only about a year and a half ago. Again, and still the discrimination for people that use drugs. Here I am facing breast cancer and having breast off, and it went into my lymph nodes as well, hence wearing this. Having to, I needed like, um, you know, silver chain to come to my house to do the home care for wound care. I actually had to get our nurse practitioner from work to come and be an advocate for me because they wouldn't come to the house because I was a known drug user because I'm on pharmacotherapy. So this is still now, you know, it's still happening. So, um, yeah, every time I go into hospital or something and then say, we'll get a silver chain out to you, I think, oh my God, here we go again. Um, my work allows me, I could give a few more examples that's happened the last year and a half, but we'll just leave it at that one. My work, which allows me to marry my two passions, to work in a harm reduction organisation for people who inject drugs, and to be an advocate for the HIV community, and especially for women with HIV. While women are somewhat more visible three decades on, and there is more support for women living with HIV, that does not mean that the work is done. It means I'm still going to be around and working for a few more years yet. My recent experience, yeah, you're not getting rid of me that easy. <laughs> My recent experience of going through breast cancer treatment as a woman who injects drugs um, and with HIV and who is on Suboxone showed me that the women's needs are changing as we age and access health services. So there's still a lot more work to do. It's been my passion all these years to speak up and support people with HIV and for the rights of those who inject drugs. On my way over here to Melbourne, I'm from Perth, um, I watched the Whitney Houston movie and her song, I Didn't Know My Own Strength. And it really moved me. In actual fact, I, had, I was crying. I was lucky I had a mask on so you couldn't see it too much. Um, when I think about the last three decades and winning this award, it made me realise I don't know my own strengths. And people who use drugs have a voice and we can really make a difference. Finally, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge Carol and Travis Jenkins, who both lost their lives to cancer. And I'm very grateful for them and the work that they did in HIV, and not at least for this award, so thank you. Um, before we go into our two final awards for the evening um, and then crack out a drink in the exhibition area, um, it's worth pausing. For the first time, my eyes have adjusted to the spotlight and I can see our conference directors, Maddie O'Hare and Lucy O'Hare, in the corner over there. I'd like to thank them. And the team at HRI, could you stand up, the team at HRI? Like, we had four years to get it right, but it's still a bit of a drag. <laughs> so, 